I'm Alexander Jensenius and I'm a professor of music technology here at the University of Oslo and I'm also director of RITMO, Center for Interdisciplinary Studies of Rhythm, Time and Motion. And I've been interested in human body motion for quite some time and uh, over the last decade or so I've been researching human micromotion that is uh, body activity, um, kind of at a millimeter level uh, and how that kind of changes uh, over time and how it is influenced by various types of factors. And this year I'm running a project called Still Standing, where the idea is that I stand still 10 minutes every day in different settings to try to understand more about what's actually happening in my body in the different contexts and how I'm influenced by various factors around me. This project actually started back in 2010 when I got interested in looking at really tiny things happening in the body. But that, then we had uh, gotten a new motion capture system in our lab and we were exploring how we could investigate the body and it, the body's motion and uh, various types of musical contexts. Now, the interesting thing about micromotion is that this is kind of involuntary and in unconscious bodily activity happening when you, for example, just stand still. So that's going to be a research method that I've been using in many of uh, my studies over the years. So we have uh, looked at how different types of music influences human micromotion, for example playing dance music or meditation type of music, to people. And we've developed a paradigm where we have this kind of championship of standstill, where we have gotten hundreds of people to come into the lab to stand still for 10 minutes at a time. And then we've been playing music to them, but also having kind of control parts where there's been silence, and also all the types of sounds. Some of the findings show that indeed we see that dance music does make music move more than other types of music, which is not surprising, but it's an interesting finding still. We also see that music with a kind of medium type of complexity also makes people move more than, for example, if you have a very high level of complexity or from very low level of complexity, so just, just playing with a metronome. The tempo also matters, so we do see that tempos that are kind of closer to like the 2 hertz resonance, that is 120 BPM, typically makes people move a little bit more than, for example, slower or faster uh, tempi. This year I'm writing up a book about my experience of um, standing still and then I also took up a challenge standing still myself uh, every single day throughout an entire year. And uh, the concept is so that I stand still for 10 minutes, I find a spot somewhere in the building, here, like here at, at Ritmo for example, and then I just stand still on the floor.
In the project, I'm using a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods to capture my experience of standing in such a space. So I hang my phone on my chest and I collect uh, sensory information from uh, the mobile phone. That includes the IMU data, the accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer. It also includes information about the light intensity, the loudness of the sound, and uh, also the pressure level. Based on this quantitative data, I will also try to see if I can understand more about my experience of standing there, because also uh, I capture also then my mind and body state and my experience of the, the space, experience of the interior and exterior sounds, the experience of the interior and exterior visuals, and also how I felt that I moved. Then from this on, I will be able to then calculate various types of features, including the quantity of motion of uh, how much I moved over time. But also other features, like looking at also then my respiration patterns and heartbeats. Yeah. The interesting thing is that I can actually pick up also even my pulse based on my mobile phone hanging on my, my chest. And then, uh, when I'm done, I will also try to see how this quantitative data correlate to my then experience and the notes I've taken in my diary. Ultimately, the interesting thing will be to see how myself, uh, how I kind of move differently over time throughout the, an entire year, but also how this kind of uh, can be influenced by the different settings um, I'm in, and also, of course, my kind of daily, this daily state. So it's a very exploratory project as such, and it's a nice kind of complement to the larger scale studies I've done with, uh, with hundreds of people standing still in the lab. So I'm still halfway throughout this project, more or less, uh, so I don't have any concrete results to show uh, yet. But there are some tendencies that are interesting to, to look at. And in general, um, I see that I don't really move that much over time. I mean, you are, in my experience, most people actually stand quite still. And then I also see that it's not so easy to correlate directly kind of the and the, the feeling of moving a lot kind of to the, the the data itself. Sometimes I feel that I move a lot, but the, the numbers don't really show it. Other times I feel that I've stood very still and actually moved quite a bit. So there is not really a direct relationship so far as I can see between kind of the measurable data and my experience of this. Many people then ask me, isn't it hard to stand still? And I wouldn't really say it's hard at all. It's actually quite nice. It's a very kind of good opportunity during the day to kind of relax and kind of just and kind of appreciate kind of standing there, kind of taking taking a moment of kind of, 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 of relaxation, you could say. Sometimes it's also stressful, particularly when I'm standing in, in public spaces or people or places where I know that people will come and, and perhaps um, interrupt me. then I can actually be more stressed. So it's not entirely kind of relaxing, you could say. It really depends on the context and the space I'm, I'm in. I've also seen that uh, throughout the year, I don't really get any better. Um, it's not really about training this thing. Um, and that's not so strange because my body doesn't change. So uh, the level of, of, of standstill doesn't really change that much either. Some of the most important drivers of the standstill is the respiration and the, the pulse and also some kind of just general adjustments in the body. And as long as the body doesn't change a lot, it's not really uh, likely that, that these wouldn't change so much either.
So all in all, this is an exciting project, I think, uh, a very kind of deeply uh, humanities type of project in the sense that I'm exploring myself, my own body and uh, my experience of the world and trying to relate this to the kind of the more large scale ex experimental uh, studies I've been doing in the past. So if you want to, to learn more about this and follow my project during the year, you can kind of take a look at this, um, this URL here and uh, follow along.